undercover mechanic. So, a blonde and a brunette walk into a mechanic shop. I have a little problem. But what happens inside is no joke. This is illegal. That's 100% illegal. What these technicians don't know is the brunette, she's a mechanic. And the blonde, that's me on assignment for ABC's The Lookout. Auto repair is not bad business. It's a great business, it's a great industry, but we have such a bad reputation. It's getting damaged by just a few bad apples. Audra Forden agreed to be our undercover mechanic. She's a mother of three, a Girl Scout leader. We can see the oil leak. And she has a website called Women Oughta Know. And having that little bit of information makes your entire experience in a repair shop so much easier. She thinks women may be targeted more often than men at the auto repair shop. But now Jerry disagrees with Audra. He thinks some mechanics can sniff out anyone like him who doesn't know about cars. I have in my hand three car parts. Which Ooh. one is a fuse? This one. They're all fuses. Uh, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> So Jerry's also going undercover, and Ben's riding shotgun. We buy two nearly identical cars. As far as the differences between them, one's blue and one's white. All right. So then Jerry and Audra practice the same lines. I just got this car. We're thinking about taking a road trip. So I want you to rotate the tires. And the guy who sold it to me, he said that it needed spark plugs. If you could do the brake work, that would be great. And the windshield wipers aren't working. Can you fix that too? And if there's anything else the car needs. To let us know. Next, we hide our cameras. Hello. And finally, we hide our mechanic. That smells pretty. It beats carburetor cleaner. Jerry's makeover takes a little less work. Ready for our first tactical briefing? As you know, we're going to fan out over the entire metropolitan area, testing mechanics and shops to see how we're treated. For purposes of this test, Audra has made sure the cars are in good shape. But she breaks something very small, an inexpensive fuse, which stops those windshield wipers from working on both cars. The only thing mechanics need to do to fix the wipers is diagnose and replace this $4 part. I'm excited, actually. I hope that the industry proves itself to be doing the right thing for the drivers. Both the men's and the women's teams will visit the same five shops in New York and New Jersey, a few days apart from one another. We pull over a few blocks away from an independent shop in Jersey City. The last thing to do is turn the cameras on and then we can hit it and drive up with our cameras rolling. At Abel, the men's team goes first. Hey, how you doing? The wipers aren't working, and I heard it's gonna rain today. The mechanic fixes the $4 fuse right away, and for the assessment, part and labor charges $85. But if it was clean, I wouldn't say I'll tell you to pick up the cylinder. And they point out the guy's squeaky clean air filter, which makes sense because we put clean ones in both cars. Hey, Sarah, where's the air filter? Before Audra and I go in, we double check ours. This white part is the actual filter. When we get to the shop, we talk to the manager, Mickey. Hi there. My um, windshield wipers weren't working. They do get the wipers working, but while they told our guys team that all they did was change the fuse, they tell us we have a wiring problem. So we have a run of wire from inside here, so under the dashboard, behind the dashboard, back up into this way, behind it to your motor, so your motor will work. The fee for Audra and me, $170. 
Mickey also recommends replacing something called a PCV valve. Another thing they didn't try to sell our undercover men. It's called a pollution circulation valve. It's a little thing like this. You're going to fix it so that I don't have any troubles. Right. And look what's under the valve. It's our once clean air filter. How did it get so dirty? Yeah. Oh. Watch, our hidden cameras actually catch them removing that pristine filter. Watch again. Now listen to Mickey selling us a new one. The air filter's dirty, it's not 100% there, but if you're doing all that stuff, you wanna get the proper ventilation. Luckily, Mickey makes a big point of giving us our old parts back. I'll show you the old pieces. Oh, there you go, education. Oh, perfect. Right, so that way you know it was done. Right. Back in the car. I personally checked this air filter this morning. Ew. Uh, Look, they, they put oil dry inside white. of it. What's oil dry? Uh, an absorbent you put on the floor to absorb any spillage. Oh, so you recognize the stuff. I do. There's the stuff in the air filter that was snow white this morning. Back at her shop, Audra also says we did not need a new PCV valve. And when she checks what they did... This valve was not changed, and this would require more labor for them to change it. We discovered they didn't replace that part at all. Not only that, the part they handed us saying it was our old one doesn't even belong to our car. So here is the one they gave us, and what do you have there? I have the correct part. They're different. Right. No matter how you look at it, they're different parts. Finally, we check all that wiring work they claim they did to make our wipers work, even though we know it was just a bad fuse. No, no wires have been touched. They haven't been replaced. They haven't been taped. This has not been touched at all. OK, maybe they have a good explanation. Testing one, two, three. We go back to find out. Audra's in our undercover van. You just push this button and talk into here. And in my ear. Two sets of microphones, headphones, ready with mechanical information if Eli needs it. We're on. Nikki, we brought a couple of cars in here last month and had them worked on, and you charged us for work that you didn't do. I didn't make any mistake. Well, if so, you sure made a whole bunch of mistakes. So here's the customer who showed up with me. And here she is in her everyday life in her shop, looking at our car. You said we needed a new air filter, but ours was brand new. He dropped it in the, dropped it in the floor. And gotten a bunch of gravel inside? Mm -hmm. Dropped some mechanic kind of shock. It's not going to clean. If the air filter fell on the ground and got dirty, why didn't you take the dirt out of it? Has to have been done on purpose, right? Was that you or one of your guys? And what about that valve they but never actually changed? Yes. Giving us a part back that doesn't even go to our car? And that I apologize for. Mickey has an interesting explanation. I recognized you. You recognize me? Yep. Nobody ever recognizes me. And why didn't you do the work honestly? Because we're feeding into what you want. That's what you want. You want drama, you want all this stuff. So you were trying to make some drama for us. Yes, I was. But apparently the owner of the shop, we met him when we were undercover, wasn't at all amused by Mickey's clever plan. He later told us he cares about his reputation in the community and he's taking corrective action. With Audra along, we paid visits to three more shops. All recommended maintenance work our experts said we did not need. It bothers me so much to, to think that it really does happen. But you know what? Yeah. It happens. Which brings us to one of Audra's tips. The best way to be safe in a repair shop is to know about your car. Do you really need a cabin air filter? Does your car even have one? Well, you ought to know. 